catch us if you can, it's baseball tonight. Eddie Onomo's heater makes its Astrodome debut, and a Pirates catastrophe isn't as bad as it looks. We'll tell you how bad it is for the Bucks. The Rangers try to power their way out of a second-half tailspin. Dante finally gets one for the road against Jim Deshaies, and another first-time fill. Mark Witten doesn't really impress with his glove or his arm. Kevin Apier gets run over by the Yankee hit parade, and the White Sox not exactly defensive in Boston. So keep your pants on. It's baseball tonight. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tuesday opener of our nightly doubleheader, along with me, myself, and I, I'm Gary Miller, with highlights, nothing but highlights, plus a look at a team who hasn't been in many lately, the Giants. We begin in the Big A, where the Angels and Indians went deep into the night in the opener of this intriguing series. California, a come from behind, coming from back from a 6-1 deficit, only to lose it in the 10th. The Angels sent it to extra innings on Jim Edmonds' ninth homer in his last 13 games, and that was the background as Earl Hershiser faced against Chuck Finley. It is early on, it's Hershiser on the mound. Tim Sam with the infield shot. Hershiser there, trying to get Tony Phillips, and blows wide of the plate. Hershiser hurts the throw. And the Angels break on top only. The Indians are now at bat in the second inning as Finley still got the shutout going as uh, California leads this one early on. One that I think we'll update you a little bit later as the Indians' seven-game winning streak is on the line. Also in progress at the Kingdom, the Brewers facing off against that man, Brandy Johnson against Pat Listad. Went off speed. Listad had no chance. Johnson has three strikeouts in the first two innings. He is by far the major league leader in that category. Johnson and Scott Carl had a seven-inning standoff in Milwaukee last week. Two runs and eight strikeouts for Johnson in that one. The Mariners come into this one, just a game under 500 right now. It is scoreless. Lagging nearly 40 strikeouts behind, but still easily the National League leader. Johnson's all-star opponent, Hideo Nomo, took them out for the third time since the all-star break, and the first time ever in the Astrodome. In the series opener, Ramon Martinez went all the way, barely holding on for a one-run win as the Dodgers continue to turn it around. There's Hideo with the big windup facing Craig Biggio. And he got it up. Biggio got it out there. And a the no-man's land for a boot single, and Biggio would then challenge Nomo, who is no contest when it comes to stealing bases. The Oscar couldn't even throw. Next pitch, Biggio says, let's go again. Field third, and then comes home on the wild throw. Opponents are now 20 of 22 stealing off Nomo. Two pitches later, the big blow. Jeff Bagwell unwinds his 15th of the year, the eighth gopher ball surrendered by Nomo, and he's in an early 2-0 hole. But the Dodgers get back, and Doug Grayback went high in the zone to get Todd Hollinsworth. The bender to get Carlos, and then Raul Mondesi, a nasty breaking ball. Nomo left the game after four innings with a torn fingernail on his throwing hand, and he gave up four runs. Jose Pera relieved Nomo. Very first batter he faces, and Biggio goes into the garden. His 13th of the year, 4 nothing Astros. Then on the bottom of the eighth, Dave Magadan pops it up. Bonville is there, Roberto Kelly in the collision. But Kelly held onto the ball, but not all of his faculties. He had to leave the game, and the Dodgers still have not scored. Graybeck's in there in a 5-5 game with a 5-5 uh, five five record in a 4 nothing game. Nomo had just one strikeout before he left. That's by far the fewest he has had. It also marks equaling his earliest exit in the game. And the Dodgers have committed two errors as well, giving them 80, far and away the major league lead. Although Nomo had just one strikeout before bowing out with the injury, tonight's K-Factor concerns the soaring strikeout totals of Nomo and the big unit, Randy Johnson, who are blazed to their league leads by putting strikeouts. Ten at a time. Johnson comes in tonight seeking double figures in double figure strikeout games. He already has three against the Brewers. In the afternoon at Three Rivers, a pitcher's duel between the Pirates and the Braves turned disastrous on this blast by Jeff Blauser of Kenny Nagel. Jacob Brumfeld and full throttle collides with Dave Park, who then collides with the outfield wall. This was nasty. Brumfeld with the huge knot and the cut on his head. Check out Dave Park after the collision. Full force into the wall. They were definitely afraid that he had broken his neck. They had to set both of their necks and take them off, immobilized on stretchers to the hospital. And it brought tears to the eyes of Carlos Garcia. More on their conditions, but the game went on. Base is loaded in a huge play here. In the eighth, 
They have the difficult 4-2-3 double play, and the Braves get out of it. To the 10th, it's one off. Dwight Smith off Jim Gott. Smith was just 2 for 10 as a pinch hitter. That could have taken two runs. To the ninth, Mike Stanton comes on as Bobby Cox makes a series of moves to his bullpen. Gets lefty against lefty. Nasty slider to Mark Johnson. The power hitter takes strike two, and then... Blazes another one by him, and Stanton picks up his first save in more than a year. The 3-1 to win in extra innings as Nagel and Glavin face each other in a standoff for the second time this year. It's the Braves' 16th win in their last at bat, including nine in the month of July. Jay Bell's game-tying RBI in the third came on his 1,000th career hit. Even though they lost a tough game, the Pirates' concerns were clearly with their fallen teammates. He wasn't really there, and, you know, when he, when he was on his uh, stomach, he opened his mouth, and, you know, a bunch of blood came out. And I mean, I, you know, I was the first one, man, I didn't know what happened, and it was just, you know, something you don't ever want to see. The ball was right, almost in my glove, and I was hit, and that's all I can remember after that. Did you see Clark at all before you guys collided? Or? Not at all. I didn't tell him at all. I mean, I didn't know he was as close to me as he was. I thought, you know, uh, he was a lot further than what he was, and I didn't feel him. I mean, I didn't see, I noticed until he hit me. I mean, I knew it was him. I knew it wasn't a wall, so... An amazing thing that Jacob Bumfield not only made the catch, but looks like that after that serious collision. The aftermath leaves Clark, though, with a broken collarbone, which will keep him out of the lineup up to two months. In his ten seasons in the majors, Dave Clark had never been on the DL. Bumfield could be back by the end of the week. He suffered stitches for a cut in his head and a deep thigh bruise. To the American League, it has now been a week since Jack McDowell obscenely left the mound in New York in the midst of his worst outing as a Yankee in a doubleheader loss. They closed an epic 13-game homestand with six straight victories and opened a week-long road trip in Kansas City against Yankee killer Kevin Apier, who hasn't been killing anyone but himself lately. Could he turn it around against the club that he was 6-1 and one in his career against? The Baltimore chopped by Randy Velarde. Greg Gagne with a futile throw to try and get him. And the next batter, Deion James, has now got people to drive in. He drives it in front of Joe Nunley, who does everything he can to get in front of this thing. Knocks it down. Lewis Columbia is going to score easily. Next put it one to nothing. Then three straight singles off Apier, and then the bomb! Paul O'Neill, his 13th home run of the year, a three-run shot, four to nothing, Yankees. Apier could kick himself after that, but O'Neill was a 500 career hitter off him, but he didn't learn his lesson. He pulled his last home run, he pushes this one to the front light sign. O'Neill second of the night, the first Yankee to do two in one game this year, and they are unloading as the Royals, they keep it going. So Apier, who has had so much success in his career against the Yanks, continues to have hard times in his last six starts now. He'll go to 0-5 with an ERA near 9. New York is looking for its seventh straight win, and they could be 6-1 and one against the Royals unless they blow a huge advantage. Although Yankee GM Gene Michael was amongst the last to know, now everyone knows that the Yanks have signed the number one draft pick, Shane Morenz of the University of Texas. He'll report immediately to only his outfield in the New York Penn League, and the Longhorn football team will make other arrangements at quarterback to go with Jim Brown. According to Texas coach Cliff Gustafson, Lorenz is a live bat, legitimate power, and a good arm. Fresh from their bungle in the Brocks, the Rangers bop down to the bird nest, see if they can turn things around against Scott Erickson and the Orioles. Top of the second, Juan Gonzalez aboard, and Foot Loops, Mickey Tettleton, who homered in his last at bat last night in Yankee Stadium, makes it two for two with his 19th of the year to make it two to nothing as he tried to pass Gonzalez in the base pass. But Kenny Rogers couldn't hold the lead. Leo Gomez, taters, just over the wall, and it's a two to one game. To the third, Otis Nixon the board after bunting his way on. Greg's on behind the plate, knows he's going to have to get rid of it quickly. Gets the outside pitch he wants, but throws it inside to second. Makes it with end up a third. And then, one out later, Wolf Park, the soft fly. Brady Anderson is there, fighting the souvenir hunters. Nixon gets in, standing up as the ball scoots away. And the Rangers took a 3-1 to one lead, but back come the O's. They have tied it at three now as... Palmero is two for three with an RBI. Gomez has his home run. Erickson and Rogers have come out of there, so they won't figure in the decision. Ben McDonald went on the DL for the second time this year. Ben the Niners reflaring, so the Orioles will have to make other arrangements in the rotation. Big Ben just two and six with a 6.63 ERA. When we carry on in two minutes, the Sox of Red try to stifle the Sox of White, including putting the brakes on the big hurt. And lots of firsts for the Phils and Rockies, including two debuts and Dante Bichette doing something he hasn't done all year. And I don't mean striking out. 
As you know, Kellogg's is the raisin brand that tastes so good, people forget it's good for them. I didn't forget. Forget what? That it tastes good. No. Oh. People forget Kellogg's raisin brand is good for you. How could they forget with all these raisins? Of course they taste good. No. Good for you. For you. Wouldn't it be great if it was also good for you? Mmm. Mm. Huh? Yeah. Now buy one two spoon Sunday at Baskin Robbins, get another one free with a coupon from <laughs> Kellogg's Two Scoops Raisin Brand, of course. See package for details. If the world's most passionate drivers got together to create the perfect car, you discover there's no such thing as the perfect car. There are eight of them. The extraordinary BMW 3 Series. For a world of passionate drivers, the perfect car. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Starting at $19,900. Summer vacation? Not for you. You've got work to do. You, mister, are a roofer, a gardener, and a dog catcher. You're working hard because you've got a mouth to feed. Our tip? Take a break to McDonald's because right now you can double up the beef on your quarter pounder with cheese. Get twice the beef for just 79 cents more. Giving McDonald's double quarter pounder with cheese a big beefy taste to satisfy a hard working man like you, you, and you. Have you had your break today? With America's highest basic long distance rate, many AT&T customers may have to be very efficient with their calls. Hello? Hi, Mom. How's a cat? How's a dog? Pete's okay. We're fine. Sarah got an ace. Seth got a hit. Love you. Miss you. Gotta go. Bye. MCI customers, on the other hand, can really take their time. Hello, Dad. Hello. Because all calls to every MCI customer in every new friends and family calling circle are always half price when you spend just $10 a month. Go ahead. Clock the dog. I'll hang on. Half price calling. Only from new friends and family. Baseball Tonight is brought to you by MCI's new friends and family. An automatic 25% savings on every call in the U.S. For the season's first two months, the Phillies were a first-place team. In a recent three-week stretch, they lost 11 games in the standings. Things have gotten so desperate that they not only dealt for a 108 hitter, Mark Witten, last night, this evening they trotted out Jim Deshays to the mound. He may be left-handed, but this is the same Twins throwaway that last season led the American League in home runs allowed and had the highest ERA in the major leagues. The Rockies had to be careful not to have anyone end up on the DL by slipping on their own drool on their way to the batter's box. They were salivating over the chance to face Jim Deshays. In the first, Andres Galarraga with a man aboard, and Andres tees off into the gap. Mark Witten getting adjusted to the vet. Make up for it with your arm, Mark. Well, he couldn't even catch the big cat. Eric Young made it one nothing Rockies. Three to one by the third. Then off Billy Swift. Aaron Dalton touches one into the corner. And he'd actually score. Here comes Greg Jeffries. Dalton with a stand-up triple to tie it at three. Jim DeShay is still in there. They think Dante Bichette and he alone drops his bat and knew it. Off Mr. Gopher, Bichette hits his first home run of the year. He's got 17 in Coors. But back came the Phillies in their half of the fourth with three of their own to tie it. Jeffries knocked in Gallagher, Van Slyke knocked in Dykstra. It was tied going to the tenth. The Phillies have just pulled this one out. Seven to six as Hayes knocked in the new Phil, Mark Whitten. We'll show you how it ended in a little bit. But we move on. The Padres and the Reds and the matinee. Hey, that got Granny in the sombrero. The Reds just two and five against the Padres this year. Brett Boone is doing it all. A huge week offensively. Great defense to rob Tony Gwynn. Brian Williams' first start in more than a year on the hill and the nasty yacker to get Reggie Sanders. Struck out six and five innings of work. Reggie, you're out of there. Tim Pugh in a two-to-one game. And whoo, Eddie Williams unloads his ninth of the year. The Padres are going to win a four-to-two. Steve Finley had three hits. He continues to shine in the leadoff spot. He's up to 292 overall. The Padres now 6-2 and two against Cincinnati. No other team in the league has a winning record against the Reds. Brett Boone hit his 12th home run of the night off cover in the ninth off cover Hoffman, but he did pick up his 16th save. At Fenway, New England native Jason Boré trying to straighten out his brutal season. Trouble early on. Runners in the corners with Jose Canseco at the bat. And a more wild as where is it? Ron Parker likes pulling around in circles, but he got him. John Ballantin is meat. 
And then he does his Steve Lyons impersonation. Bottom of the third, 2-0 White Sox. Hangs the curve. Oh, and Ventura continues. The former Gold Glover has had a brutal defensive season. Coming around to score. Three runs score in the inning. All on there in face of that error. Three all in the eighth. Lyle Mouton on third. Dan Belinda on a relief. Blake Thomas lost one to right. Troy O'Leary up and gunning. Uh, a little off the line. Four three White Sox. Bottom of the eighth. Man on two out. Move on the go-ahead run against Roberto Hernandez. Cheese right down the plate. Swung and missed high. Then it's a skewer right to Thomas. Hernandez gets out of it. The White Sox slowly but surely are playing better baseball. Beret picks up his fifth win against eight losses. Beret had a career record of 24 and seven coming into the season. He has eight losses already this year. Cormier picks up a loss in relief. The Red Sox fall to 4-2 against Chicago. At Tiger Stadium, the A's in town. Parky Anderson. And an autographs. Lou Whitaker up in the first and out. A meaty fastball off Ron Darling ends up in the upper deck, his seventh of the year. Good Tiger lead. Bob Higginson in left. At the ready. For Ruben Sierra, who by the end of the week could be a Yankee. Higginson, ah, oh, the juggling catch. What a grab. To the seventh, the Tigers holding to a 3-1 lead. Bases loaded for Kirk Gibson, who has been in a serious RBI drought. It's the bounder. It goes through a pool in infield. That's going to get two home. Tigers go on to win it 6-3. Tully Baylera gets his seventh win of the year. Last just five to give up just one earned run. Whitaker had a couple of RBIs in the night. Fryman went three for three. Plus the fielder, 0 for three, but the Tigers win. When we come back in a buck and a half, the Mets continue to crest across the country and get ambushed by Brian Jordan. Builders Corner is your cabinet store. You'll find a wide selection of styles for any decor. DS First and will design cabinets for you whether you're building a new kitchen or remodeling. Let Builders Corner show you how to create your kitchen or bathroom cabinet. We carry cabinets for every budget. Starter to custom design. Come in and see our many lines of cabinets. The Pier, Mid-Continent, Grandview, Encore, Kitchen Compact, and many more. Builders Corner, your kitchen and bathroom cabinet store, inconveniently located on Highway N.E. to Wausau. That was really awesome. I even had a little draw on it, too. Hello, still going. That was a good one. Thunderbolt will take five to ten strokes off your game or your money back. It's just my uh, bigger sweet spot. If you miss it, if you're off the sweet spot a little bit, it seems to get out there anyway. I'm saying exactly how I do with my other clubs and getting 25 to 50 yards more. That was at least 75 yards past what I'm normally hitting. To order the Thunderbolt driver or a free video, call now. <laughs> getting closer to the record, while Texas is looking for its first division title since they began playing ball in Arlington. The Rangers face the Oreos at Camden Yards at 7.30. Then, Atlanta would love to gain a little breathing room in the NL East, but out west, LA's gonna be in a battle right through September. The Braves take on the Dodgers, live from LA at 10.30. The Wednesday night doubleheader, tomorrow on ESPN. The sky down, Juan Guzman going against the Twins and looking for Joe Carter to finally break out of his RBI schneid. Came into the game in a 4 for 52 slump. Doubles into the gap for Frankie Rodriguez that tied it at two apiece. Career RBI number 500 as a Blue Jay. And in the top of the fourth, Chuck Knobloch continues his hitting shoes on this road trip. That's going to get out of here into the bullpen. It's third of the year off Guzman. The Twins take a 4 3 lead. Then a bullet up the box, but Knobloch's there. Guns it from his knees, robbing Domingo Sedeno and the Twins. Take it 7 to 3. Guzman falls to 9 and 4 in his career against the Twins. 3 and 7 on the season. His ERA is over 7. This for a guy who has some of the best stuff in the major leagues. Frankie Rodriguez now 2 and 3 as a twin. He pitches 7 innings, but allows just 2 earned runs. At Wrigley Field in the afternoon, Jamie Navarro had a 3 run double. It picks up his 8th win as the Cubs. It's, it's the Chicagoans' first back to back wins since July 9th. The Expos have won just one of their last nine road games. When we come back in a minute 15, Oral up against the Angels. He returns to his old National League home. Let's we'll see how many strikeouts the big unit has put up on the Brew Crew. And we'll also look at how much Matt Williams' break has busted up the Giants. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. Dead? Yeah. have 47 boxes to ship out by night. Easy. That X shipping software. It's just point click and ship. <laughs> really? Peters thinks I'm working my tail off. It's just point click and ship. Take a long lunch. You click and ship. Logo. Point click ship. 
FedEx shipping software is so easy. Just point, click, and ship from your own computer. Mr. Peters! <laughs> I'm dead. You're dead. I'm dead. You are really, really dead. The free shipping software called FedEx. Pocahontas is flying everywhere. And now Burger King has found a new way to capture even more of this magical Disney adventure. Come to Burger King and your favorite things from the movie are recreated. And there's four new Pocahontas classes. Only Burger King has them. They're only 99 cents each with any value here. So it's a terrific burger at a terrific price. Isn't reason enough to come in? Now there are four new ones. Burger King, get your burgers here. Brian Jordan has already homered in the game. There he goes again. The hanger from Dave Malicki in the bottom of the field with a man aboard and two outs. And it's three all now. Bobby Bonilla against Mike Morgan. Back in the rotation off the DL and out of the park goes Bonilla. A solo shot. He's the league in total bases. He's Ties the game at four. Two batters later. Jeff Kent. It's a rope to right off Morgan. That's not in. Who killed Bonilla? Kent continues his hot hitting. But back from the car. Scott Cooper with two aboard. Maliki still in there. Cooper also just off the DL. Everyone getting healthy in this game. Cardinals go up six to five at that point. That's how it stands in the seventh. Morgan lasted five. Give up five earned runs. And the Cardinals add another. It's now seven to five as they bat in their half of the seventh. Kent on the game is knocked in three. He had his 12th home run. He is three for three in this ball game. Matinee at Miami. The Giants try to stay unbeaten with Dion. Kurt Abbott facing Terry Mulholland. The center. There's Dion. Where's the ball? Well over his head. Adam with a stand-up triple. Three triples in the first inning. Bottom of the eighth. Steve Decker at the plate. He will hit a shot. Dion breaks in, breaks back. He's got a beat on it. That's going to be in there. Dion struggling in his initial days as a giant center fielder. Decker ends up with a triple. An easy Marlin record of four triples in the game. The other big story here, Bobby Witt got his first complete game in more than a year. His first win since mid-May. Dion went one for four. He's two for ten as a giant. Jeff Conine, who injured his shoulder in a collision last night, missed just his second game in Marlins history. He could be out most of the week. Larry Mulholland can't pitch very well at home where opponents are batting over 300 against him. But for God's sake, leave him in San Francisco for the next road trip. The Marlins went 10 for 25 against him Tuesday and even 400. Bob Tewksbury is bad at 330. But Dick Pohl had better stuff tossing BP than Mulholland had in this game. The Giants share the worst road record in the league, and they sit in last place in the West. They've lost nine of the last 12 now. The Deion Sanders trade certainly helped Cincinnati, but will it be any benefit to San Francisco? He waited until the last second to report, considering that he was leaving a winning team. Maybe he knew something. On June 3rd, the Giants were surging, 20 and 16, averaging more than a homer per game and leading the National League West. But it all changed on one Paul Quantrill pitch to Matt Williams. The result? A broken foot. More than two months in the DL now, and a reversal of fortune in San Francisco. Since Williams' injury, the Giants are 12 games under 500, have dropped nine games in the standings, and their run production is down a third of a run per game. I've been on edge for six weeks. You know, it's not... I've never had anything like this before, and I, hopefully I'll never have it again. But it's tough when you, when you can't go out there and help contribute, you know, do something for the team, help us win, or, you know, whatever. Although Williams' replacements at the hot corner, Steve Scarsoni and Mike Benjamin, have been a respectable 270 with six home runs and 20 RBIs, much of the rest of the supporting cast has floundered. Terry Mulholland is now 0-3 with a 7.66 ERA in his last five outings. Rod Beck has blown three of his last four save opportunities while posting a 1980 ERA over his last seven. This from a man who didn't blow one save in 28 opportunities last season. The other corner man, J.R. Phillips, has almost twice as many strikeouts as hits. And while their trade with the Reds rids them of Darren Lewis's 302 on base average, third worst among NL leadoff men, it got them the worst leadoff man in on base percentage, Deion Sanders at 264. San Jose Giant fans weren't the only ones glad to see this home run on Monday night. 
Even though Matt Williams only played half a game Monday and homered for San Jose, he had soreness in his broken foot. He'll have to be shut down for a few days, further delaying his return. Speaking of homers... It is a scream, get out. Today's homers include Ryan Klesko's second off a lefty in as many days until his game went on Monday off Plesak. Ryan Klesko had never homered off a southpaw. Center less than two minutes away with NFL news, including an injury to Kajana Carter and something you won't want to miss about Michael Jordan. Come out of here. No, please keep your hands in the car. We'll come back to that later. That one needs battery. You're going to get Daddy in trouble. Excuse me? No, that one definitely has too many parts. We got to go. Perfect gene for your 10-year-old son. And your 10-year-old husband. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. I'm late. Three friends. Three pair of Wrangler jeans. Everybody's comfortable. Even the fish. Wrangler. Real, comfortable jeans. It's summer break. Who's yours? No, theirs. Your kids. And you, sir, are their coach, their doctor, their pony, and their chauffeur. Our tip? Take a break. You've got a craving. McDonald's has a Big Mac. And now you can double up the beef for just 79 cents more. Get more all-beef patties. Or all-beef patties. Making a double Big Mac a burger big enough to satisfy a coach, a doctor, a pony, a chauffeur, and a dad. Have you had your break today? Action in progress, top of the second, one all game. Garrett Anderson against Earl Hershiser and get it out of here. Dead center, Anderson continues his tear. What a marvelous rookie he's been in that Angel outfield. His eighth of the year to make it two to one. But they weren't done. Tony Phillips then scoots one through the right side, just bleeds its way through his second end of the game. Let it score easily. Easily. Phillips also has a double in the game. He's two for two with that RBI, and the Angels are up three to one on Oral as they try to get retribution for last night's loss. Cleveland two and one in the season series. California looking to even this up. Also in progress, the Brewers and the Mariners. Luis Soho, golfing one. Did he get it? Out of here off Scott Carl. A solo shot with Randy Johnson on the mound. Sometimes that's all you need, but they've gotten more support. Alex Rodriguez doubled in Tino Martinez earlier in the game. And so RJ, who has five strikeouts already, he just posted his fifth in the fourth inning here, is up two to nothing. Second in the Rangers and the Orioles. A tight one there as Baltimore has battled back to a three-all game. They've come to the bottom of the ninth now. Vosburg on for the Rangers. Orozco came on in the ninth for Baltimore as they battle. Johnny Oates takes on his old team. And speaking of Johnny Oates, coming up on Wednesday, our regular doubleheader starts in Camden Yard where Johnny goes against his old club. They'll send Bob Tuchter to the mound against Jamie Moyer, who is re-emerging and is in a very successful stretch for the Birds. Then, Steve Avery and Atlanta go out to L.A. against Ismael Valdez and the Dodgers.
We'll see you in an hour with the second version of baseball tonight. Highlights of the Angels and Indians and Randy Johnson against the Brewers. Stay tuned for SportsCenter. Steve Entman has found a team. They'll tell you about that. They'll have more updates on the Pirates' collision in the outfield, the injuries there in the aftermath. Keep you posted on all the baseball. Stay tuned for SportsCenter with Dan Patrick and Brett Haber.